Hello and welcome to the Stokeford Parish Sunday Online. Uh, with me, Simon, Curate, and Peter as well, Vicar here. Uh, and it's a very special Sunday today because it is Remembrance Sunday, isn't it, Peter? It is. So, uh, and part of our uh, online today will be uh, commemorating Remembrance. Uh, we're stood here by the north wall in the church by the war memorial for the Second World War fallen. Uh, if we were able to stand outside uh, this year and have our full service uh, in Stapleford, we'd be reading out the names of those who have fallen. Uh, this year we're all a bit quieter and a bit more silent and in a moment we will have our two minutes silence. Um, for that we're going to stand here and um, we won't actually stand here on the video for two minutes, we'll stand quietly for a few moments but if you want to make it two minutes silence just to start off in memory of those who've fallen in the Second World War and the First World War and memories of those we know uh, and uh, prayers for those we know who are in action at the moment, um, then please do pause the video to make up your two minutes. But uh, let's read these familiar words to start with, Shah. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will, we will remember, remember them. them. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Beneath the shadow of thy throne still may we dwell secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone and our defence is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame, from everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone, Short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Time, like an ever-rolling stream, bears all its sons away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies at the opening day. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our God while troubles last and our eternal home. Well, thank you very much for joining in that short act of remembrance there. And if you want to actually hear my Remembrance Sunday message to Stapleford, uh, then please do look at the Stapleford Town Council website and you'll find the Remembrance Sunday link there. And you'll hear a recorded message from me, recorded earlier courtesy of the Town Council. And I hope that that message will be something uh, that will be a blessing to folks all around Stapleford. So please do uh, go over to that if you'd like to follow that up. But here on our online, we're going to continue in a moment with our theme, which over these months of uh, these weeks of uh, November, uh, we're thinking of this theme, speaking tenderly uh, from the passage from the prophet Isaiah, uh, which actually um, ties in quite nicely. There are some themes of remembrance of things uh, within our, our theme today. So um, let's now sing our next song the song that celebrates Jesus and his sacrifice for us on the cross. See his wounds, his hands. 
joining in that song back here in our theme for today we're thinking of the speaking tenderly things mm. if you if you logged in last week to the online I've introduced that topic Isaiah 40 uh, the words of comfort coming through prophet Isaiah and uh, speaking to our feeling of being in exile and being dislocated away from all that's familiar and the, the mountains and the valleys in the way that mm. God is going to prophesy to to make smooth so we talked about that last week really um this week a little start for 10 what were you thinking of yeah well as you said there are probably some themes that link to the remembrance theme as well so the passage from isaiah today uh very much is god talking about his justice for the nations as well um and we often have a bit of an idea of what justice is and there's been a lot of talk about that this week with the american election going into another lockdown uh, we need justice in all of those things from our democracy to our freedoms. Um, so thinking a bit today, well, what does God mean actually by justice? And his idea for us, I think, is a bit different to what we can often perceive that to be. Okay, so uh, stay tuned and Simon's going to give us a bit of a reflection on that and we're going to carry that on through into a conversation and uh, Fran's going to join in as well. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, but first, thank you, Christina, for reading the reading for us from Isaiah now. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 to 9. The servant of the Lord. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out, or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens who stretches out who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See the former things have taken place and new things I declare before they spring into being. I announce them to you. In today's reading, God is speaking into the pain of a people in exile, a people that have forgotten to come to him in prayer, praise and thanksgiving. There are people that felt lost and were in need of comfort 
and were crying out for justice due to the oppression that they were facing. Today, people around the world are feeling lost and disillusioned by the pandemic and the restrictions. And in the past week or so, there have been many cries for justice. But who do we look to today? People shout out to the government, they shout out to the courts, shout out to the powers that be in the world that things just aren't right. But there really is only one person that can set things right with the world. Because when we call out to the world, what do we actually mean when we shout for justice? Are we simply looking for someone to blame, to point the finger at, someone to punish, for someone to get what's coming to them? Is that really what justice is? When people think of a judge today, they may think of an aggressive TV personality like Judge Judy or Judge Rinder shouting and pointing the finger at someone. World leaders this past week making accusations, blaming other people when things don't go their way. Is that really what justice is? No. Real justice is a call to have things made right. And from the picture painted in Isaiah, God is the only one that can achieve that for us. God is desperate for us to call out to him, to set things right. And how does he do that? Well, he does it by sending Jesus Christ to walk alongside us. And what does justice for Jesus look like? What does Christ's justice look like? Yes, a call to be holy, to say sorry for the wrong in our life. But in this passage, we see a God who steps down to walk alongside us in our time of exile and struggle. And as it says in verse 6, a God that takes us by the hand to walk alongside us. A God that heals the sick and restores sight to the blind, making wrong right. This reminds me of a very ancient image, one of the earliest icons of Jesus. It's simply called Jesus and his friend. It shows a lonely priest walking through a desert, but alongside him, is his God to whom he's called out to. Jesus has put his loving arm around him and is journeying alongside him. This pandemic feels like we are exiled from our own way of life. And at this time, God wants us to call out to him. The only one thing that he wants is for us to know that he can be there for us. He wants us to call out for him, to him to bring justice to our world to set things right, to walk alongside us, and to wrap his loving arms of protection around us. Well, hello. We've come back into Zoom, as you see. Uh, we haven't done this for a while, have we? But uh, thank you very much, Simon, for your talk there and for leading us into this lovely passage, this amazing passage from Isaiah chapter 42. Um, so we'll hear more from you in a minute. We've, as you can see, we've also got Fran here, and it's nice to see you, Hi. Fran. Hi. I'm you fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Peter. Hi, yes, Simon, as well. Good, good. Well, um, we've all been having a little think about this passage, and I uh, wonder, Fran, if you'd like to just share a bit of your perspective on uh, what, yeah. uh, what's come to mind. Well, Peter, these, um, these chapters are just my favourite chapters of the whole Old Testament. I have them scattered around the house. And I was thinking of Remembrance Sunday and that we need to remember who Jesus is. And this passage really helps you see who Jesus is. And it especially after what Simon's already said, it describes that Jesus is that bruised reed, that smouldering wick, that gentle side of things. And it's quite surprising to think that the Messiah who was coming to do all these things would be tender and gentle. But it made me think that gentleness can be so strong that actually there's a huge strength in being gentle and tender with people. And Jesus, if you think, accomplished just the most that anybody has ever accomplished. And yet he did it with that tenderness and with that kindness that was also incredibly strong. So that really just uh, hit me when I was listening to Simon and then reading the passage. Yeah, it's interesting you're saying it's about Jesus, which is, is, is right, isn't it? Because it doesn't mention yeah. Jesus and obviously no. written many <laughs> centuries before. But it is interesting, this actual passage is picked up by, in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 12, um, where Jesus is busy healing the sick. 
and he's telling people to just to not shout out about who he is because he doesn't want fame. Um, and then he then quotes this passage like Jesus is just quietly getting on with the business of mending people's lives. He doesn't want loads of celebrity status and he does it gently and quietly and amazingly powerfully, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is like one of those uh, passages that you suddenly discover uh, prophesying about the Messiah well before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting though that I don't think it, it stops just there thinking about what Simon was saying in his reflection just the whole business of how justice is brought uh, yeah. into today and I know Simon's going to say a little bit more about that in a moment um, but uh, this whole business that it is Jesus who does this and then it's almost like the prophecy of Isaiah is saying come on you guys be like be like, be the servant of the Lord, be uh, mobilized. You're sat there feeling broken, a bit sorry for yourself and, a, and out of action. And uh, with these words, he's saying, look, I will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. I'll make you the ones who will open the eyes that are blind to free captives from prison to release those who sit in darkness. It's, and uh, it's like following the example of Jesus and then mobilizing us to to be yes. that, that that people and be these these agents of justice and gentleness mm. yeah. in the world. Yeah. Simon, so, mean, you had some sort of practical um, ideas of how we could do that. Perhaps. Yeah, I, I think I think I did at least. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's because there it's wonderful sentiment to be able to say yes, we need to be a people of justice, a people of peace, a people that walk uh, in this gentle manner, in this Christ-like manner. Um, but I think a bit like I was saying in reflection, when we look around and the world says we need justice, and then what it seems to mean by that is these, um, you know, calls for punishment of people actually saying to point the finger and say it's their fault, and when they get punished for it, it's all very aggressive. How do we be that people that are called to be righteous and gentle and walk like Jesus? Um, and just with the American election and different things going on this week, I keep seeing on my BBC app, fact check we're going to fact check what these people have said is it actually true um, and i think we could just practically in your day-to-day -day, uh life watching the bbc or the news or telly or whatever you, decision you make you can always do that with your faith actually in the decisions you make just stop and fact check it and say actually is this how god wants me to be in light of what he says in the bible so fact check it against what jesus is like um, or if someone says this needs to be this way in our society, well, let me Jesus fact check it. Is that what Jesus asked me to do? Um, and you can do that just sort of with every everything, almost every decision, every thing that we make as we try and live that life, walking gently, humbly, and in a way that is just. Um, it's maybe just a little practical thing that we can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. Well, the stop. Sorry, Fran, you go on. Oh, the political leaders are just so noisy, aren't they? It's just so, yeah. it's just so much in your face. Yeah. And, and the, the call of Jesus, the call of God in this passage, really, is to centre on him, remember who he is and how he does things. And that actually ends up steering how we are pastorally with each other, I think. And you can then help in the work of opening eyes that are blind and freeing people from the darkness and the, the dungeon of what's happening uh, while we're going through what we're going through today. Yes, yes. It's, um, I, I love these, these terms like a bruised reed, he will not break, a smouldering wick, he will not snuff out. It just shows that every single person, the most vulnerable person is valued alongside everybody else because mm -hmm. usually our crass efforts and probably me as a vicar or whatever make, make decisions you know think oh that'd be really good to do that and it always alienates some people or some people end up being on the receiving end of it in the wrong way rather than the right way and that's the same with a government policy or with a party line or whatever there's always somebody who who's worse off for it but somehow Jesus is able to do his work in the world um yeah. and nobody even the most vulnerable won't be snuffed out as a result and i think that's just an amazing prophecy <laughs> amazing thing to aim for i think whenever we make a decision how is it <laughs> affecting others yeah. and rather than going oh it's for the greater good and most people will be fine with this but i know one or two people will 
um, be hurt or whatever. That's that's not good enough. You know, we need to sort of somehow get beyond the majority thing to actually know everyone matters in this somehow. So yeah. you know, that's a massive yeah. challenge for decision makers. It is. <laughs> I don't know if you've got any more final thoughts, Fran, on on that. Sort well, of I thing. think I think that's a really good point, Peter. Actually, that's a really good point because I think I think what this passage can be looked at is something really huge about the people of Israel and about our great and almighty God. But actually, the the joy of it is that it centres right down into how we treat one another and one to one and how we how we emulate Jesus how we remember what Jesus was like how we remember what God is like and God is about each one of us as well as the whole world isn't he mm -hmm. and it's all couched in this really exciting I will put my spirit on him it's a new thing that I'm going to declare it's going to spring into being it's like an excitement that something new is going to happen Yes. Um, Simon, that's sort of um, perhaps a f few final thoughts from you before we close just on that excitement of. Yeah, I think we, we talk so much about this sort of thing. Um, but I just think if we invite everybody to think, well, what would it actually look like if our lives looked like that most of the time? We're not going to get it completely right. Um, but it's such a beautiful image to aim to. Um, and with such, why wouldn't we want to aim for it? And why wouldn't we want to try and make this a reality in our lives and in our church, uh, in our relationships? Good, good. So I just pray everyone, as everyone watches this and has heard Simon's talk and our reflection, that it's a sense of we can do this and we can be part and just remember God's got a plan, even though we're sat in perhaps feeling more like the captives in prison rather than being released from it at the moment. But pray this has all brought us all some hope we're going to sing again now in response to this so uh, light of the world let's uh, sing
So now over to Paul Bedell. Thank you to Paul who's prepared some prayers. And so let us all pray. Drop your still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our lives the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace. On this special day, gracious Father, we pray for peace and for healing in our world. For our national leaders, that they may have wisdom to know and courage to do what is right, especially in light of increased cases of COVID worldwide. For everyone, that their hearts may be turned to you in the search for truth. For those who are working to improve international relationships, that they may find the true way of reconciliation. For those who suffer as a result of war, of terrorist attack, of national disaster, the injured, the disabled, the mentally distressed, the homeless and hungry, those who mourn their dead, and those for whom without friend or home, they have nothing to sustain them in their grief. Today, Lord, we bring you especially Gillian and Mike Hammond struggling with the effects of COVID-19. For those caught up in the terrorist attacks in Vienna and those whose lives have been shattered as a result of the recent earthquake in Turkey. We pray, Lord, that they may feel you close, that you will prompt someone else to come close to these people and show your love and compassion. Amen. Drop your still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our lives the strain and stress and let your ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace. Poppies are so closely connected with Remembrance Day. So let us look at our poppy or that of someone sitting near to us if we don't have one. They are bright and cheerful colours. Let us give thanks to God for the lives of those who have died in war, remembering all the joy they brought their family and friends and all the good things they did for their home and for their country. We look at the red petals. Red reminds us of danger and harm. And we ask God to be close to those who are still facing danger each day to give courage to the armed forces and compassion to all who help others. Place your whole hand over the poppy. Poppy is so fragile, needs to be handled gently. God cares for those who are hurting and those who are sad. So let us ask God to comfort all who are grieving the loss of someone they love. And finally, we place a finger on the centre of the poppy and we ask God to help us play our part in working for peace in the world where we are this week. In your name. Amen. Drop your still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our lives the strain and stress and let your ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace. Thank you, God, for all the help that you have given us in the past week. At a time of such uncertainty, we thank you that you have kept us safe and protected us, helping us to do our work through each day, whatever that may be and wherever we may now be doing it. We thank you for our homes and families, our loved ones and all those in our circle of friends we call most dear. For those we know that we cannot see, because distance gets in the way. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for our friends and those we work with and live near. We thank you for the kindness that we have received this week, for the opportunities to support those around us, and for the help and any sympathy that was shown to us. Thank you that today we have glad and grateful hearts. Thank you for being there, Lord. Amen. Drop your still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our lives the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace. Thank you so much, Paul, for those prayers. Just before we close our prayers, 
Um, since Paul recorded those, we heard the sad news of Councillor Ray Darby um, being admitted to hospital and then sadly dying. Um, so our prayers are very much with Maureen and the family and our thanksgiving for Ray and the amazing person he was and uh, just want to pray for God's blessing and God's peace to surround Maureen and family and that she would know that the prayers of the whole of Stapleford are with them at this time. Lord, we pray that in your name. Amen. Well, a huge thank you to everybody that's contributed to uh, this week's Sunday Online. It's very much appreciated. Um, we're coming into the end of our time together, uh, but Peter, a few things to share in the life of the church family. Yep, just a few updates. Obviously, we're going into lockdown, so um, we can't do a lot at the moment, and we haven't got the church open very much uh, just for our broadcast here. We are hoping to have the church open for a couple of days of prayer um, because the archbishops have called us to, to pray, uh, and we want to do that. So we're going to open the church up uh, hopefully on Thursday the 19th of November, and then again on Tuesday the 1st of December. We'll have an all day and evening open for prayer time both those days with a particular focus and people can come in, walk around and uh, find um, places and uh, things to look at, to pray for and places to sit. Uh, so that will be for those two days. Uh, as well, um, Simon, there's an initiative, isn't there, on the, with the archbishops to pray every day just even just to stop where we are and pray every day at six o'clock during the lockdown. Yeah, it's, it's quite a, a thing to do. So um, I'm just putting a, a few minutes before six, a reminder on my phone so it pings and it doesn't have to be long, um, just a few minutes of prayer every day at six. And it's to pray for our nation really, isn't it? Yeah. To pray, to take a lead in seeking God for his mercy for our country, um, as we humanly can't always solve everything that's happening at the moment. So prayer, hopefully coming up the agenda, and there'll be those opportunities as well as our Thursday Zoom prayer times. Uh, please look out for those and join in with those too. Um, it's also a big quiz night coming up on Saturday the 14th. This is um, sponsored or sponsored through Tear Fund. They're providing the quiz and we have an opportunity as we do the quiz and sign up in the normal way through Stateford Parish uh, at aol.com, the uh, church web address, um, email address, and uh, we hopefully have teams and it will be a case of them making a donation to Tear Fund uh, yourselves as part of um, that big quiz night. So uh, please do join in with that if you're able to on the 14th. And um, Messy Church can't happen this month, of course, but please pray as we contact some of the Messy families and deliver some Messy activities uh, alongside our story uh, for next uh, weekend, which will be David and Goliath for the kids. We will do a, a kids online as well next Sunday because we can't do the kids work in church at the moment. So look out for that. So all that's coming on, all that's in the making. We also, Simon, have been enjoying ourselves, haven't we, midweek with school assemblies? Yeah, there's been a good collection of those. So it's quite a, a trick to how do you do an assembly online, but a mixture of video and uh, live presenting. It's been good fun and a really great opportunity with everything locked down to still uh, reach the kids around the parish uh, with the message of Jesus. Yeah, so do please pray for our continued assembly ministry around the particularly the primary schools in Stapleford so thank you for that so we're drawing to a close of our online now we hope you've enjoyed the different parts of it the remembrance and the, the uh, content within the the Isaiah and the justice theme uh, and uh, all the worship and we're going to bring that together in a moment in our wonderful hymn thine be the glory uh, to remember that Jesus is with us he has the victory and he overcomes death and suffering and he's there with us before we do that let me pray a final prayer dear lord you are sovereign over all the events of the world at the moment here and abroad in the past and in the present and the future Lord, may we be part of bringing justice and peace into this world. May we be agents of peace, agents of your mercy, so that we can bring blessing, harmony and togetherness in our community and in our world at this time. 
Lord Jesus, help us. Thank you that you're with us and that we can belong to you and be known by you. Amen. Amen. See